Hey guys, I'm David Welch, custom car builder and TV host. Today I'm going to show you how to install an air conditioning system into a classic truck. We're going to be using a 72 Blazer, but your kit's going to be basically the same. You might have a few different things, but they're basically going to be the same. You're going to want to make sure that you read your instructions. We've got our condenser, we've got our receiver dryer, we've got our air compressor with all of our brackets and our bolts, we've got a nice new control panel all of our electrical, a mounting plate for our evaporator blower that comes with a defroster, all of our duct work. So on a sale of uh, say one to 10, this is gonna be a difficulty level of maybe a five or a seven. But with our help today, we're gonna bring that all the way down to a two or a three for you. You don't really need a lot of time. It's like 10, 15 hours if you're already doing a restoration on your truck and it's mainly a part that's gonna come down for you. And you don't really need a lot of special tools. The regular stuff you got in your toolbox is already going to help you with maybe the exception of needing a hole saw. But other than that, we are ready to go and ready to install. All right, well, we've got our grill off, our bumper off. We've got all the opponents out of the exterior and the interior. We took our plate that the, comes from our kit, we put it on. We've got our three inch circle marked out here. Now I'm gonna use my mini saw right here to go ahead and cut that out. I'll cut it out just a little bit larger than the three inch circle, just to give myself a little buffer zone. I've got my three inch hole cut out. Next, I'm gonna take my plate with my hurricane on it. I'm gonna find out where this drain plug goes. We've got a hose and a grommet for it. So I'll simply put this up. Yeah. And then I'll screw it in. I'll mark my hole and I'll take a one and a half inch drill with a cutout and then I'll drill that out. I've got my hole cut out. I put my grommet on. From the outside, I put on our drain plug hose. I got it going through the carpet. Now I can attach it to the bottom of the drain plug on the unit. And then I can go ahead and slide it onto the studs of our brace on the outside. All right, so we've got this on here. I'm not tightening up my bolts just yet because we've got to put this grommet on. I'll use a little bit of soap on here. I'll slide it over and then we'll be able to tighten it up. When I tighten it up, I'm just not gonna grab one bolt and tighten it all the way down. I'll snug them up first and then I'll slowly go around and tighten up each one so that we don't warp our plate. I'm going to put my expansion valve on. I've got my seal. I just slide that right over. I've already got my oil on it. I'm just going to go ahead and screw it on. And when you tighten it up, make sure you don't over tighten it or you'll smash your seal. Next, I'm going to take this pigtail and we're going to attach it using this that comes with a kit. Clips on just like that. Then we'll take our insulation tape and we'll wrap it up. Yeah. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and hook up my compressor and the brackets. Now I know when you take this out of the box, you're just going to go get them powder coated or paint them, but you don't want to do that just yet. You might need to modify these like we did for our headers here. You can see I notched this out right here. So make sure you trial fit it first, and then when you do take it to the powder coater or you paint it, a helpful handy hint for you is these sharp edges right here, paint and covers don't like to stick to that. Make sure you round that off so you get the best looking bracket you can. Alright guys, next we're going to go ahead and put our condenser on. I've already placed it up here, found out where I wanted to drill my holes and drill them out with a 5 16 drill bit. You do not want to drill into your radiator. So a couple little tricks you can do is put some tape on the end of this so you won't go too far. Now once I've got that drilled in, I put my top bolts on first because there aren't any nuts that are welded onto the back side. I got my top on, now I can do my bottom. Helpful trip for that is we tape the nut onto our finger. Now I can get it up in behind and I can put my bolt in. This is our receiver driver. We got a couple of clamps right here and it's going to go right about this location here. So that we make sure it goes in the right location, we're going to take our hard line right here. We're going to put the little seal on it, a little bit of oil. We're going to slip it up here like this and we're going to go ahead and bolt it on there. Then we'll bolt on our receiver dryer. Now we'll know exactly where our clamps go. We've got a couple of hard lines that are going to be going through our radiator support. In order to do that, we'll need to drill a hole right here. We're going to measure from the center of our receiver dryer down two inches. We'll use our one and a quarter inch saw. Then we'll put a rubber grommet on to protect our lines. A very important tip here, you have to use what's known as a backup wrench. All that means is I'm putting a wrench on my condenser here on the nut that does not move because if I am tightening this nut right here and I tighten it too much, it's going to break that off and I don't want that. I get to install our rubber hoses now. This right here is your binary switch. If the Freon pressure gets too low or too high, it'll turn off the air conditioning compressor to save it. This is going to go towards our radiator core support, and this 90 degree angle is going to attach to our expansion valve. I get to hook up my compressor now. When I do that, I make sure that we've got our seal on here with plenty of oil. I make sure that these connectors are what's connecting to the compressor. I don't have to worry about hooking them up wrong because one size only goes to one fitting. You can't go wrong. Here's your heater valve. It's going to shut off your coolant going to the evaporator cooler. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to where I've got proper clearance and then I'll route the hoses the rest of the way. This is our air inlet grill. This is our thermostat control and what we need to do is uncoil this, bring it around to the inside. We're going to bend it so we've got a two inch tab right here that we'll install into our evaporator so we can control our temperature. If your kit came with some templates, you're going to want to cut all that stuff out. If you're putting in custom outlets, you want to take care of all of that first. We don't want to be cutting into any wires or any of our duct work. Go. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and install my control panel. Yours might be a little bit different. It might use electric servos. It might use cables. A lot of them have lights in them. If they do, make sure you take care of your wiring first so you don't have to climb up underneath there and do it after. I've got my control panel in, now I'm going to go ahead and hook it up. Yours might be a little bit different, but it's all basically going to be the same. We're going to need power, we're going to need ground, we're going to need to route the wires and make sure we keep them away from anything that's moving or sharp. Just follow directions and everything will be just fine. I can put my duct work in now. When I'm doing this, I'm doing it just like everything else. I'm making sure I'm not getting anything sharp. I'm keeping it away from anything hot or moving. Uh, after I get it up in there, I'm going to secure it with some zip ties. All that's done, I can put in my glove box, I can get on my door. Now we're ready to evacuate and recharge. Now I can pour in my coolant. 
I can connect my binary switch here. I'm going to put just a little bit of dielectric grease on that to keep corrosion away, but I am not going to hook up my compressor just yet. I want to make sure that we evacuate the system first, and just before we put the Freon in, then I'll go ahead and connect this. Now, more than likely you'll need to take this to an air conditioning shop and get it evacuated and recharged, but maybe you have this equipment. If you do, make sure that you evacuate the system for at least 45 minutes, turn off the pump, see if you've got any vacuum draw on it. If you do, then go ahead and double check all your fittings, evacuate it again. When I'm going to put my Freon in, that's when I'm going to connect my compressor for the last time. I also like to use a little bit of dye so I can double check for leaks with my black light. I'm going to double check and make sure that none of my lines are touching on my compressor. And uh, we're going to need about 24 to 36 ounces of Freon in here. I'm only going to put in about 24 ounces. I'll double check and see how cold it is or not, and then I'll be able to judge if I need a little bit more or less. So we're going to get this set up, check back, and see how cold we are. Well, we are all done, and it is just blowing cold. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our Instagram, our Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.